Let's do problem number 14. A tennis player makes a successful first serve 51% of the time. Assume that the player serves nine times and each serve is independent. Find the following probabilities. So here we have a binomial problem because we have two possible outcomes. We have success and we have failure. So in this problem, success is making a successful first serve. And this 51%, that's the probability of success. So as a decimal, we can denote it by little p, and it would be 0 0.51. So this is the probability of success. The number of trials is the number of times the player serves. So in this case, n is equal to 9. So whenever you have a binomial problem, basically you just have to look for these two things. You have to look for p, and you have to look for n. And usually p is always a decimal or a percentage. That's a pretty big clue. And so you have two possible outcomes. So this is binomial. All right, so now we can answer all of the questions. So part A. What is the probability that the player gets exactly three successful serves? Okay, so we want the probability that there are exactly three successful serves. So x in all of this is the number of successes. So we want x to be equal to three because it's exactly three. So the number of successes, which is x, is exactly equal to three. So now we just go to stack crunch and type all of this in. So let's try it. Okay, so we go to stat, calculators, and then you go to binomial. And then so here n is nine, p is 0.51, and then we want exactly three. So exactly three, there it is. So everything looks good. You see the x there, the equals, just like we have written down over here. So compute. There it is, 0.1542. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. So this is equal to 0.1542. So that would be the answer to part A. Part B. Part B is probably very similar. Let's see. What is the probability that the player gets at least three successful serves? So we want the probability that we have at least three. So again, x is the number of successes. So we want at least to three, so that would be greater than or equal to three. So the symbol for at least is greater than or equal to because it's three or more. So this would be greater than or equal to three. Boom, there it is, 0.9196. Let's write that down, 0.9196, good stuff. Part C, it's a long problem, a lot of parts, but it's pretty easy once you know it's binomial. What is the probability that the player gets at most three? So at most, this would be three or less, so less than or equal to three. I mean, it's good practice because it's really nice to know, like, you know, at least is this, at most means this. So really, really useful. So let's see what we have. So at most would be less than or equal to, so 0 0.2346, let's write that down, 0 0.2346. 0 0.2346, good stuff. Part D, I think there is a part D. Wow, it's like a super problem. <laughs> what is the probability that the player gets fewer than three? Okay, so fewer than three means less than three. So the symbol is just the less than symbol. So let's see what this is. So that would be less than three. So 0 0.0804, I'm rounding to four decimal places. Uh, it doesn't specify the decimal places, but you know, just, just using four, 0 0.08. 0, 4. And then I think there's a part E. Let's see. Yes, <laughs> more than 3. That's pretty easy. That should be greater than 3. So P of X more than 3 successful. So that's where you get it from, right? Exactly, at least, at most, few. It's, from, it's right from the sentence. So more than 3 would be 0. 0.7654. Let's write that down. So 0. 0.76. 0.7654, and that's it. That's how you do it. I think uh, two parts are challenging, I guess. One is recognizing it's binomial, and again, you can do that by looking at the percentage and knowing that you know you have two outcomes, right? So if they give you a percentage and a decimal, or a decimal and n, you know it's probably going to be binomial. So just think about it, like are there two options? And if there are, just go with binomial. And the other I guess somewhat difficult part is knowing what all of the symbols mean, right? So exactly is equals, at least means means this because it's three or more. 
at most means three or less, so it's that. Uh, fewer than is the same as less than, and more than is the same as greater than. It's kind of a nice problem because, you know, it serves as good practice. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.